Sipo. Thank you so much. You co-wrote the book, of course, with uh, uh, Sarah Wilde. Yes. But good to have you in the studio with us. Uh, first of all, when you, when, you look, when you start the book, you st start with definitions uh, of the words commonly used uh, when we talk about climate change. Why was this important? Well, often it seems like we live in different realities, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just look at state capture, any of these phrases, everyone takes a completely different meaning from it. So like climate change, for some people it'll just mean what's happening with weather away somewhere else or yeah. an issue that we don't have to deal with. Or often for people it'll be, it's an issue for people that shop at Woolworths, right? It's, mm. it's, we all come from it with different, like we learn it at school or we see it on TV, so we have different definitions. So we thought, if we're going to do a book about an issue, let's say what that issue is yeah. and get that out the way. So mm -hmm. then we can all be like, okay, cool, this is the problem, let's talk about it and let's see what we can do. Yeah, because you talk about energy, uh, the definitions between uh, when you talk about energy and also electricity, electricity yeah. uh, versus those type of things because, uh, and, and it's, it's very interesting because even myself, you also think about the same thing. Energy and electricity are not the same thing. Yeah. But you, de you define those things right at the front of the, uh, the top of the book as well. And then you go into disturbing scenarios <laughs> that you paint, three scenarios. Yeah. One not so disturbing, yeah. uh, but then one is very, very disturbing. And th these scenarios are based on just the smallest margins in terms of the rise in temperature. Yeah. Mm. So it's that, it's, it, as, a, as an environment journalist, it's really hard saying to people, you know, the difference between the world warming by 1.5 degrees and 2 degrees. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a lot, right? Like it's half a degree. Yeah. I mean, that's today the temperature is going to shift by 12 degrees or whatever it is, right? Across the course of the day. Um, so it's very, very hard saying to people, it's crucial, the difference. And these are why we have the scenarios, which come from the UN has a climate change agency. So it's full of scientists. And they say, mm -hmm. this is all the research. And every few years they publish a thing saying, this is what all the scientists in the world think about climate change. Yeah. They're saying. Um, and last year they published a report saying exactly this. Uh, they had scenarios, and if we don't do anything, if we don't do a lot, uh -huh. it's really, really bad. And especially for people, the less you have, the worse it's going to be. Because yeah. if you have money, you have insurance, you, know, you have sort of a buffer. Whereas people who live in communities, people who rely on farming, subsistence farming, yeah. they don't have that. You know, your crop dies, you don't have insurance. So then you're finished. Right? And one thing I found interesting in your book as well when you talk about uh, farming uh, is that uh, I think it was in 2016, 2017 uh, you spoke about the fact that uh, farm, farmer suicides have started yeah. on the increase because of the drought in South Africa yeah. by about 25% yeah. or so. We didn't know any of that. That's, that's incredible. Just talk, talk yes, to us about that. Well, often the climate change story we only know afterwards as well. Mm. You know, you don't see the little bits as it's happening. So like the Cape Town drought we didn't see it was happening until it happened, right? So farmer suicides are the same thing, where people put the numbers together, insurance companies put the numbers together afterwards. Yeah. And it's this thing of, it's really hard farming in South Africa. You know, I d yeah. We don't, I think, in Joburg internalize it because you turn on the tap and in a lot of places there's water. Yeah. Um, but we don't have a lot of water and farmers are struggling all the time. Yeah. And it just takes one bad drought and that's it, right? And often mm. people are just, because they're breadwinners, they're providers, they have their family and the whole community normally around them. Yeah. The pressures and the stress on top of that. The, the guide part. Let's talk about the the uh, you know the survival guide. Yeah. Uh, can we survive? Are we doing? Are we taking the right steps? Is government doing enough? So South Africa, we're really good at planning for things, right? We have great scientists and policymakers. Um, so we have great plans for surviving mm. and for reducing carbon emissions and making sure. You know, we change things. So like in the case of cities, you can have really nice cities. One of the big parts of climate change is good public transport, right? So you see yep. it with Rio Vi and these kind of things. The problem is politics, and because a lot of, in the previous administration and this administration, a lot of people are making their money out of mining and coal mining. Yep. Um, and that's a huge political issue. That stopped most progress. You know, we talk about the, the last decade, and one of the big losses was for reducing carbon emissions, and also preparing communities for what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, downstream, when you talk about fossil fuels, the, the, you know, coal, a lot of people are making a lot of money from coal, the yeah. transportation, yeah. the mining. For you yeah. to stop that conversation with those people now, they'll tell you, listen, you know what, I don't have time for this. It's a problem. Yeah. 
the so problem. The, the, the real sadness is a lot of the unions in the late 2000s, the late noughties, mm -hmm. had great plans. It was like a million climate jobs campaign and the idea that we can move from coal to renewable and different kinds of environmentally friendly things. Yep. And it'll create jobs. And it'll create jobs in communities. You know, you see wind farms in the Eastern Cape and mm -hmm. solar farms in the Northern Cape. So lots of jobs in places where there aren't. Um, and part of the nine lost years is those plans all got put on hold. Yeah. So that's where we are where we are. Oh, well, listen, uh, fantastic stuff. It's, it's a great read and it's very simple as well because you really uh, speak to us, the, the layman of, of this world. South Africa's Survival Guide to Climate Change, Sipo Kings, and co written by Sarah Wild. Uh, get a hold of it, it'll scare you a little bit, but it also gives you uh, a, little bit, a little bit of hope because we can still get out of it, get out of this little quagmire that we're in.